the dinosaurs, one of the mightiest groups of animals to ever live. They ruled the earth essentially unchallenged for over 140 million years, spanning the complete duration of the Mesozoic era. No other groups of animals were able to challenge them on land. And it was only when a giant asteroid struck Earth 66 million years ago that things changed. The impact event was catastrophic for all life, but dinosaurs were especially affected, no thanks to their large sizes, and within a short amount of time, all non-avian dinosaurs were no more. However, this wasn't the end for the terrible lizards as one group managed to persist, the avian dinosaurs, aka birds. This group of familiar animals are indeed dinosaurs, and specifically belonging to the theropod clade. Today, they are found throughout the world and are represented by over 10,000 living species, which is no doubt very impressive. Albeit, no living species of bird possesses the imposing presence that the non-avian dinosaurs had. However, not long after the demise of the non-avian dinosaurs, there was actually a family of carnivorous birds that emerged that came alarmingly close to becoming just as terrifying as many of their predecessors. This menacing group of avian dinosaurs mainly resided in South America and created a powerful dynasty that lasted for tens of millions of years. These were the forest rackets. This family of flightless avian dinosaurs are more commonly referred to as the terror birds, and rightfully so. All members possessed large hooked beaks, powerful necks, and razor sharp talons. Additionally, multiple species of this group managed to grow to absolutely massive sizes, with a few even being some of the largest Cenozoic predators to have ever lived in South America, as well as being the largest carnivorous birds of all time. However, they didn't start off as giants. Rather, they came from humble beginnings with their first known member, the Paleosilopterus. This primitive terror bird originated in what is today Brazil and existed roughly 53 million years ago during the early Eocene, a time when the Earth was both extremely hot and experienced heavy rainfall. It was one of the smallest and slenderest members of its family, with adults only achieving a height of 1 meter or 3 feet, which is about the same size as a stork. Its small size though granted it an enhanced level of agility and speed that allowed it to become a successful predator in its environment. But it was likely not an apex predator, as it was greatly outsized by other carnivores in its area which included a variety of crocodilians and snakes. Fortunately for the terror birds, and less so for others, they would not stay small for very long. And 3 million years after their first known member, a second genus would pop up that was 50% larger than its ancestor, the Alu Theronis. This size increase was extremely impressive, but this bird's true claim to fame is its nationality, so to speak, as it is the only known member of its family to have lived outside of the Americas, with its remains being located in both France and Switzerland. Its larger stature made it quite the killer, and it's thought to have possibly preyed on even small horses and primates. It was no doubt extremely successful in Europe, but despite its success, it was still in the Americas, not Europe, where the terror birds would eventually get out of hand in a scary way. The Oligocene in particular is when this family really reached new heights, as it was then that the first giant terror birds truly emerged, with the arrival of a new genus, the Paraphysornis, which inhabited Brazil. It was an absolute giant compared to older terror birds, with males standing 1.4 meters or 4 foot 7 inches tall. Its bones were also extremely robust, resulting in it being quite heavy, weighing around 180 kilograms or 400 pounds, making it heavier than the largest living bird today, the ostrich. It was also the largest known terrestrial predator from its environment, leading to the consensus that it was no doubt an apex predator. Paleontologists believe that it would have used its clawed feet to kick and slash prey in order to cripple them, before finally dispatching victims by jabbing them with its large and sharp beak. It's also been suggested to have scavenged when the opportunity arose, a trait that some think extend to all members of this family, including the later terror birds, some of which once again reached greater sizes than their predecessors. Perhaps the three most famous of these later giants were the Titanus, Kellenkin, and Brontornis, two of which were also the largest of the terror birds. These three units, like most other members, resided in the Americas, and spanned from the early Miocene all the way to the early Pleistocene. Titanus, the youngest of these three, was also the smallest, though still taller than the vast majority of any bird, with large specimens standing at 2 meters or 6.6 .6 feet in height. Unlike most of its relatives, this bird lived in what is now the US, including the states of Texas, Florida, and California, 
This makes the Titanus the only large South American predator to have migrated north during the Great American Interchange. As a result, it routinely interacted and competed with a mix of North American predators such as the Smilodon and the short-faced bear. However, thanks to its size, it's not believed to have been actively hunted by either and was still an apex predator within its ecosystem, which consisted of dense forests inhabited by over 100 known species. Yet, it was perhaps not as much of a dominant force as the Kelenkin or Brontornis, which rivaled each other for the crown of being the largest hairbird bird ever. It's now thought that the Kelenkin was the tallest of this family, measuring 3 meters or 9.8 feet tall while possibly weighing 250 kilograms or 550 pounds, making it about the same weight as a male grizzly bear. The Brontornis, on the other hand, wasn't as tall, with adults being about 2.8 meters or 9.2 feet tall, but it was likely heavier thanks to its more robust and stockier build, with individuals weighing anywhere from 770 pounds to 880 pounds or 350 to 400 kilograms, making it not only the heaviest terror bird, but also the heaviest carnivorous bird of all time, and the fourth heaviest bird overall. There's only one problem though, it may not have been a terror bird, or even a carnivore. Certain paleontologists have questioned these two assumptions about it, referencing the lack of its remains and its toe claws, which bear some resemblance to those found in herbivorous birds. So until more remains are found, it's hard to say what this bird conclusively was. Although, in recent times, there has been some pushback that cited certain features that the Brontornis possessed which are seen exclusively in terror birds, such as the shape of its thoracic vertebrae, leading most to consider that it actually was a predatory terror bird. However, due to its immense weight, it was still quite different than other terror birds, including the more nimble Kelenkin and Titanus, likely inhabiting open landscapes rather than forests, while relying more heavily on ambushes to capture its prey, as it developed slower locomotion to accommodate its enormous body mass. The Kelenkin and Titanus, though, appear to have been extremely fast runners based on their legs, which much like ostriches, had short thigh bones with elongated bones in the lower leg and foot. Paleontologists believe that both of these species and many other terror birds could have exceeded 30 miles or 48 kilometers per hour at max speed making them faster than the fastest recorded human ever, Usain Bolt. Their formidable speed allowed both of these giants to easily run down all of their prey. And despite their large sizes, it's usually thought that terror birds specialized in smaller prey such as small rodents, mammals, and reptiles rather than megafauna. However, recent research has shown that the largest terror birds may have actually been able to take down large prey as well. This idea stems from the discovery of two kinds of skulls within the family the Silopterine skull type, and the terror bird skull type, the latter of which is only seen among the biggest members and is mainly characterized by being more rigid. This rigidity resulted in higher bite forces and pecking power, leading to the belief that these giant nightmares may have been capable of taking down larger mammalian prey. Along with deadly beaks and claws, this family had yet another advantage that assisted in their reign, their senses. Their eyesight and hearing in particular were quite potent as shown by studies on their brain cases and skulls. Regarding eyesight, it is believed that while they didn't have as sharp vision as eagles or hawks do, they still had excellent vision and possessed the crucial ability of being able to clearly see prey in both extremely bright areas and dark areas. As for their hearing, their inner ears were developed in such ways that suggested that the terror birds were amazing at hearing low frequencies, which they could use to track and locate prey. Their hearing was so good that they could actually hear footsteps of small animals that were completely hidden by undergrowth, and their hearing is currently believed to have been one of the main ways terror birds found their prey. It was thanks to this hearing, eyesight, and many other traits that the terror birds were able to become such dominant predators for millions of years. Unfortunately for them, being the largest carnivorous birds of all time wasn't enough, and eventually they found their reign fading into oblivion. Currently, it's not completely understood why the terror birds went extinct, but many ideas on the subject have sprung up throughout the years. Traditionally, it was thought that the Great American Interchange that occurred 2.7 million years ago was the main catalyst, as it introduced carnivorous dogs, bears, and cats from North America, which of course drastically increased competition for the terror birds. However, some have questioned this conjecture, as new studies have shown that the timing of this event doesn't correlate well with the extinction of the terror birds. Furthermore, most terror birds and all their prime South American competitors were actually already long gone by the time most placental predators showed up in South America, casting even more doubt. 
The Titanus itself is also used as evidence against the competition extinction hypothesis, as it successfully expanded northward during the interchange and was able to coexist with big canids and felines for millions of years. As a result of these counterarguments, a new idea has come forth, which suggests that while competition alone probably did not wipe the terabirds away, it probably had a stacking effect along with other factors, which possibly included climate change, as from the Oligocene to the Pliocene, the world slowly cooled towards a series of ice ages. This may have had more of an impact on terabirds than North American carnivores, as the former were better adapted for more tropical environments rather than cooler ones, which, along with an influx of competition, may have been the final nail in the coffin. That being said, the terabirds did do their best to persist to the very bitter end, and were around for far longer than originally given credit for, with some smaller species being dated to only 96,000 years ago, a sharp contrast to the original extinction estimates of 1 million years ago and they may have survived even longer, as a set of fossils attributed to an unidentified terror bird belongs to a formation dated to 18,000 years ago, which if true, meant that terror birds died out just a couple thousand years before humans arrived in South America. Alas, this does mean that humans never got to witness firsthand the epicness of these beasts, but perhaps this is for the best. And, after all, they still had to deal with another extinct family of very large birds of prey known as the Territorns. Yet that is another story.